Hey guys, Bobbery18 here, and welcome back to some more new Super Mario Bros. U. In the last part, we finished off World 1, and in this part, we'll be starting on World 2, Layer Cake Desert, with the first level, Stone Eye Zone. So yes, this is the obligatory desert level of this, of this game, because you know, every Mario game has to have a desert level. If you come up here, you can get a secret box with an acorn in it. Uh, I already had an acorn, so it's not really that useful. Um, yeah, because I think you actually need an acorn power-up to get to one secret in this world to get a star coin, or this level, to get a star coin. I think it's the second one. Don't quote me on that, but, oh yeah, but it's the second one because the first one's right there. So yeah, I told you I know this game front to back, or maybe I didn't. I, I thought I said it somewhere. I think I put in, like, my playlist, um, title, or playlist description that, that I've, this is like my, my fourth or fifth time 100%ing the game, and it is, so yeah. Uh, these stone pillars, the, their eyes, like, look at their eyes. They follow you. It's kind of creepy. Uh, you just have to make sure you look at ones to see what they do. Some of them will just go up and down like that. Some of them will, like, drop, like that one back there with the star coin on it. Or above it. Uh, P-switches, I'm not really sure if we saw these yet. But they turn blocks into coins and vice versa. Uh, for this part, I, this is also a challenge in the challenge zone thing. You have to try to get all the coins in there. I, I, I've got in 49. There's 50 in there, I think. Um, I got in 49 before. It's actually pretty hard to get 50, all 50, because usually there's, like, one in the corner that just really gets out of your way, and oh my gosh. No, 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 no. I will not die. This is an easy level. Okay, good. I saved myself somehow. <laughs> yeah, okay, this star coin, um, usually I would just get it with Flying Squirrel Mario, but I don't have that, so... Once you see the sand, uh, like, spurred up like that for the first time, then you just want to jump, and then, um, the, the sand will come up right after. That's how you know when the, the sand will come up for these sand spouts right here. And also, if you get stuck in the middle of the sand, sand spouts, and these stone eye pillars go down, by the way, and yes, that's their official name, stone eye pillars, yeah. The name of the level is stone eye zone, so I guess it makes sense. And yeah, if you, uh... Those sand pillars, if you get stuck in the middle of them, they'll push you up, to, so you'll be standing on top of them, so that's good. There we go, the first level of World 1 done, and I like how it's like layer cake desert, and if you see there, the thing that the fortress is on, it's like a layer cake, and off, off to the side you can see ice cream. And did, did the Toad House just get robbed? <laughs> I thought this was a kid's game. <laughs> oh, this is terrible, some weirdo stuff, weird, oh, that. Some weirdos... Ah, I cannot talk. Some weirdos... You know what? I'm not even going to read it. You can read it for yourself. Yes, yeah, so some weirdo stole his stuff. Okay, sure, now I can say it. And he's going back all the way to World 1-1. I don't know why he picked there. Why wouldn't he just go to, like, somewhere where I can get him? But yeah, there we go. Yeah, all-time double favorite stuff. And so he's going to go try to go... Two acorn planes, yeah, pipes. T uh, pipes will launch you to different worlds like that. See, you can launch to any world that you've been to before. Uh, like this. Although I think actually just traveling there would be actually be faster, <laughs> just like walking. Because the pipe takes a, fi a while to load, and then you have to get launched. Although it, t it does take you right near where uh, this rabbit is. And this rabbit's name is actually Nabbit. He is a rabbit that steals items. After, he'll be found in every world throughout the game at least once and to get all five stars on your save file Which is what I'm going for you have to catch him once in each world So I think he appears after you beat a level or kill yourself three times uh, Beat a level three times or kill yourself three times basically. It's just like a time challenge here I think you're a little faster than him, but when he jumps he's oh shoot that is a dead end Oh jeez, I suck. <laughs> uh, he's fat. Uh, I think you're faster than him, but when he jumps, he uh, he gets to be faster than you. So you want to watch out for that. Oh uh, wait, I got him there. There we go. You caught him, Abbott. Uh You want to catch him before you get to the end of the level or before the time runs out. So yes, we get Toad stuff back. And every time you you uh, uh, grab a Nabbit, I was gonna say rescue Nabbit, but no, you're just trying to get his stuff back. You get a pea acorn. This acorn is just like the flying squirrel suit, except it'll let you do the thing where you can glide up when you shake all the time. Like like the P-Wing in Mario 3 that lets you fly all the time. This is basically that, except you won't run out of your glide uh, spurt up ability, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. 
So now we now that that's out of the way, and yes, I will be catching him in every level that we see throughout the game, just because um, he's he's required to get 100% basically. Uh, yes, yeah, so another Toad House here. I'm gonna try to watch for both of the items. I think this one's gonna be a little harder just because it's in World Two, but actually that wasn't really hard. <laughs> it's one and three if I remember them right. One, three, there we go. Now I can ground pound on Toad. I just love the look on his face. Look at the look on his face there. He's just like, what, what are you doing? He doesn't even look like worried or anything. He just looks like distressed. Now if someone was jumping on my head, I, I think I would be a little more than distressed. <laughs> yeah. So now we can go on. What the heck is your deal? Dad warning. I, I, what am I supposed to be warning about? There's not really anything in that level that's that needs a warning. You know what? I'll use an item just because I'm small Mario. I'll use a mushroom. Basically, you just press B to go into your items. Then, then you select an item to use it. It's kind of self-explanatory, basically. This is a pokey. When he turns into leaves like that, well, that's sort of mechanic that you'll see in this level. Because, spoilers, Yoshi's in this level. And Yoshi has something to do with... The pokies turning into, like, fruits like that. I probably just gave it away right there. Anyway, pokies, they're spiky, so you can't jump on them. Well, you can, but you'll get hurt. And, uh, you can kill them with fire flowers like that. Or with Koopa shells like that. If, uh, you can, uh, uh, shoot fireballs or Koopa shells at their segments. But if you shoot their head, they'll they'll die automatically. Well, die instantly, basically. So, yeah. Uh, I thought there was a star coin up here. Maybe it's up here. Oh, no, there it is. I knew there was one up high like that. I'm pretty sure all the star coins in this level are in, like, hidden alcoves like that. In fact, I think the second one is right here. I, I kind of just jumped off nothing right there, but I just failed anyway. Also, that quicksand will suck you in. Uh, so, yeah, you don't want to get caught by that. So, you want to keep jumping. Luckily, that sand, uh, sand pillar here will help you glide up or get up. Is there a star coin up here? Oh, yeah, there is. Wow, those were two right next to each other, and we're not even halfway done with the level. Well, now we are. Because that's a checkpoint. Uh, they asked, this is Yoshi up here. I already explained Yoshi. But yeah, he's in this level. I probably should have gone back to explain the different types of pokies, or the different thing things you can do with pokies. But anyway, uh, these are... I'm not sure if they're swoopers or not. They were, they look kind of look like uh, actually either keys from Zelda or like a swooper from Paper Mario or something like that. I don't know. I'm just going to call them swoopers because I don't know their official name. Uh, you actually do need to go up here. Actually, no, you don't. There's just coins up there from what I remember. Because I know where the second or the third star coin is. But yeah. Also, you probably didn't see me back there, but when I ate the pokey, when it turned into, like, that fruit thing, you get however many segments it has gets translated into uh, bars on your fruit meter thing. So, yeah, if you eat a really big pokey like this one it turns into fruit, your meter will get filled up immediately. I'm going to try to... No, I don't know why, but I always get, like, ice flowers, which I really don't want. Then again, I guess when power-ups is this easy to get, you aren't gonna get that great of a reward. I mean, that's not really how it works. It just... It just seems like that would be logic, I guess. I don't know. Uh, can I get... I, I kind of want to get an acorn. No. I know you can get different power-ups from that. I've gotten an acorn from it before. In fact, it was in this specific level, too. So, yeah. Uh, also, remember, remember I said Yoshi can jump on spiky things? Well, yeah, you need Yoshi for this unless you have the flying squirrel suit, I think. Also, you can eat these guys to get a bunch of fruit like that. Uh, what did I get? Uh, no, I didn't want an ice flower. Now I'm going to see if I can try to get something else. I got your ice flower. Now please give me something else. No, no. Okay, there we go. What did I get? Uh, what is it? Oh, yes, it's a flying squirrel suit. Uh, I, too bad. Like, the flying squirrel suit doesn't actually do anything while you're on Yoshi, sadly. It would be kind of cool if you could glide with Yoshi like you could in Mario World. When you have the flying power up like that and shoot, all the enemies respond. But oh well, we're at the end of the level anyway. Also, it kind of goes without saying, but it's dark in there, so you want to make sure that you be wary of that. Uh, if you throw fireballs down there and w while you're in the dark, um, you can see, or the fireballs will, so will sort of light your way, so you can sort of see a little bit more. But yeah, to get the top of the flagpole, you just want to jump on that, uh, that pokey there, and it'll bounce you up with Yoshi. And I love Yoshi's little flutter jump there. Sadly, we have to leave him. Oh, we got fireworks here. I'm not sure if we got this before, 
but let me, I should probably explain it. If you get uh, two matching numbers on the time, up up at the time thing up there, then at the end of the level, when you reach the end of the level, then you will get an item from Toad. So yeah. Um, it's random what item you get, but it's usually a star. I'm actually kind of surprised I got a, f a nice flower here. Although, I think really the only useful items are mushrooms and the flying swirl suits that you can actually put on in your inventor inventory. But yeah, this is, an, this is gonna be another dark level. Um, I think I'd rather have my flying squirrel suit, actually. Because in this level, we will be introduced to another Baby Yoshi type. And it's actually gonna be right at the beginning, sort of. Because it's a dark level again. Oh yes, these guys, Fire Snakes. Was that what the name of the level was? Was it, was it Fire Snake Cavern? I don't know. Anyway, yes, they will obviously light up the way like that. They will grow their heads like that, like you saw. I think those guys were actually in Mario 3, so they, they're a returning enemy from that game. And here, there will be a new type of Baby Yoshi, an, an illuminated Baby Yoshi. If you press R, or shake the Wiimote, you will be able to do like a flash that illuminates the area. And it also stun enemies, like watch, I can flip that, that uh, hammer bro over. Also, Yoshi, baby Yoshis cannot eat fire bros or hammer bros or any type of bro. But they can eat piranha plants, so that's good. I think the next star coin is actually down there, so I should probably go down there. Uh, or, no it's not, it's just a bunch of coins. Wow, I suck. <laughs> I, even though I played this game a lot, I still can't remember exactly where all the star coins are. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything down here, but I'll, I'll just check just to make sure. Oh yeah, down here is just an area where yeah you can eat piranha plants like that. Oh shoot. Also, the baby Yoshis count as a hit like you saw there, so yeah. If you ever lose them, then... Or, or if you ever get a hit, you'll lose the baby Yoshi first and not your actual power-up. So yeah. Uh, that's where you get another baby Yoshi if you needed one, but I don't. For the star coin, and yes, this is actually a star coin, and the baby Yoshis can eat the fire snakes too, if you would come up here. If you would be so kind, yes, even when they have big heads like that, uh, he can still eat them. To get the star coin, you can't ground pound with a baby Yoshi, so you want to let the baby Yoshi go, then ground pound that block, then take him to the bottom, or the lower rung thing here. Ground pound that, then bring Baby Yoshi with you. Well, you don't have to have Baby Yoshi with you, but it makes this next section a lot easier if I if it's what I think it is. Yeah, it is, because there's fire snakes down here. Baby Yoshi can eat the fire snakes, so you kind of get the idea. <laughs> even You don't even have to eat their head like that or gobble up their head. You can just eat any part of it, and it'll eat the whole fire snake, so that's pretty cool. And that is also where the second star coin is, so you want to press the P switch, and yeah. Kind of late on that explanation, but I don't really care. I'll try to go for these A-Red coins, but for some reason, these A-Red coins are, uh, are like, really awkward for me to get, because, like, you have to jump up for that one, and it seems they don't give you enough time, but I, obviously they do, and I just got it right there, so... Maybe this game is turning on me just like Mario Sunshine did with it being opposites, but... I can't have that be two games in a row, can I? I don't know. Well, that was, that was weird. Well, not weird, it's... A, it's a fire bro. Oh yeah, Baby Yoshi can also eat the fire bros fireballs. So that is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the third star coin is up here. It's kind of hidden and you might not see it and it sort of stumped me on my first playthrough. Up here, obviously Baby Yoshi's, well, the, the illuminating Baby Yoshi's won't illuminate the, uh, the outside, basically. And also, did you see, like, the heat waves in the background? I love that. I think I said in the last part when we went into the... Acorn Plains blooper level that I love the level of detail in this game. I mean, it's it's not that great, but I mean for a new Super Mario Bros. game. Like, look at look at the rippling in the background to show that it's like in a desert. It's just so cool, I don't know. Anyway, I think I said this in the last part also, but if you bring a Baby Yoshi that you found in the level to the end of the level, you'll get a 1-up from it. So it's like we reached the top of the flagpole, and the flag actually looks like we reached the top of the flagpole, but nope, we were just a little bit off. And also, you can't take a Baby Yoshi you found in the level out of the level. So that kind of sucks. So yes, now we can go to the fortress. And I think this is the last level I'll be doing. The Stone Slide Tower. Well, I don't know. I, fortress slash tower. Mo they call it towers because most of, these, most of these towers are like vertical levels. They have been for, I think, most of the new Super Mario Bros. series. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I interchange them, fortress slash 
slash uh, tower, whichever you want to call it. I usually use them interchangeably. So yeah, um, these are, um, I think they're called spine. No, they're not spinies, but they're, I think they're, I'm just going to call them spiky beetles. I don't really know their official name. You can freeze them just like dry bones and kill them. Otherwise, they're pretty invincible because they have spikes on their head and you can't uh, kill them with fireballs. Although these, these uh, dry bones are pretty vulnerable to ice. Then again, actually, if you think about it, the ice flower is actually a pretty broken power-up. Just think about how many enemies, like unkillable enemies, that it could that it can kill that couldn't have been killed otherwise. Like the spiky buzzy beetles there. And speaking of that, it's kind of weird that we're seeing regular buzzy beetles, or spiny buzzy beetles before we're seeing regular ones. But yeah, it can kill uh, spiky buzzy beetles, dry bones, both of which couldn't be killed before, and there's a life up here if you actually cared. I already have 42 lives in the second world. Jeez. Oh shoot, I probably shouldn't have let that, that uh, dry bones up there. And actually, you don't, ha you don't have to move these platforms over. I think you're able to jump from that top one over to the pipe, but I always like to anyway. And when you get to this area, don't bother moving anything yet. And also, I guess I should explain that the gimmick of this area is this. You can twist these. I, you saw it before. Twist it by shaking the Wiimote slash pressing L and R on the Wii U Pro Controller slash gamepad. But before we go over there, and also, needless to say, there's quicksand in this area too. And these are big dry bones. You have to uh, ground pound on them to uh, stun them. They can't be frozen. Well, they can... But they'll only stay frozen for like a split second, and they won't actually stay frozen. Oh, I guess you don't need to come in here, but it's an item if you want it. I'm really bad at timing these things. I'm Yeah, see, I'm, I was going for the ice flower, but nope, I got the star. Then again, I guess the star isn't that bad, but yeah. So, uh, no, 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 do not fall down there. Do not fall down there, whatever you do. I don't care what you do as long as you don't fall down there. And it killed those guys. I guess that made up for me losing my ice flower, sort of. Not really, because the ice flower can do so much more. Even even stomping on an enemy... Uh, wait, what was I going I don't know where I was going with that. I was gonna say, like, hitting an enemy from underneath isn't as powerful as using the ice flower, but I don't know. And yes, up here, it's kind of actually... That, that was actually really cryptic. I, I mean, I have to admit that that is pretty cryptic on Nintendo's part putting a star coin right there. And this is sort of like a puzzle to get the star coins. You want to make it so that these, uh, I think they're called spike rollers or something. Or whatever the name of the castle was named after, I think. No, no the name of the castle was after the, uh, was after the fact that you can, like, move the platforms around. But I, I think these things are called, like, spike rollers or something. You want to make it so that platform will end up so that you can carry a spike roller over to those gray blocks, and that's the only thing that can destroy those gray, gray blocks. Except for Bobombs, but we haven't gotten into Bobombs yet, obviously. Those won't come for a while. Uh, yes. So that's how you get that third star coin. Now we all have to do... Now all we have to do is try to fight Boom Boom. Try to fight? What am I saying? He's like the easiest thing ever. I, although I've explained this before, but he is. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the, all of those pipes are cannons right here, but... Yeah, you can also kill dry bones by pushing them against the, the wall there. But yeah, you want to use the metal cannon to get up here. So yeah, if you try to freeze the big dry bones, they'll just do that. So they can't technically be frozen. There's a there's a fire flower up here, and actually I think I'd rather have that for Boom Boom. Even though I'm not going to kill him with fire, but you can if you want to. I remember when I tried to kill Boom Boom with fire in Mario 3, and it's not like in this game where you, where if you hit him with fire enough times... He'll just uh, take one hit, but in Mario 3, he'll just die instantly if you ki if you kill him with fire. But yeah, here's Kamek. Uh, he's like powering up Boom Boom. He's also sort of like a wizard guy. He's the main villain of the Yoshi Island games. Yoshi's Island, I think, yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what Boom Boom is doing different. Oh yeah, he does that. Uh, but it's pretty easy. I'm sort of embarrassed that I actually took a hit, but the strategy is basically the same. Just jump on him right as he gets up, then he dies into that sand. Well, actually, he doesn't die because he comes back in the next tower, but unless it's a different Boom Boom, I would not be surprised if Bowser has, like, a line of Boom Booms waiting up to fight Mario. <laughs> that would be kind of surprising, I guess. 
So yes, we unlock a whole bunch of new stuff. Just look at, <laughs> look at it. We unlock like three or four different st things, as well as a cutscene here. Oh yes, Kamek's going back to Bowser's castle. Well, Peach's castle, and he's putting like a uh, mini tornado around it, as well as making the sky dark. Hmm, slowly turning into Bowser's castle. Well, I guess it would be be more so evil Peach's castle, not really Bowser's castle because it's not really his. In fact, I don't even know where Bowser's castle is, if this is technically the Mushroom Kingdom. But anyway, I think that's going to be all for this part in New Super Mario Bros. U, because we finished up basically the first half of the second world. So in the next part of New Super Mario Bros. U, we will be maybe even f maybe finishing up World 2, depending on how much we get done. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you then.